All right, yeah, let's start the show off tonight. We're going to look into the Christian McCaffrey dynamic here with you got the post-draft, post-rookie draft. The Panthers don't add any rookie rookie running backs to, to come in and compete with him or share snaps. You got the just everybody, the peaking of the Christian McCaffrey love. He's in the... He's got the backfield to himself, and then you got C.J. Anderson that comes in and just you know just dashed the hopes of a sole proportionship pour, for Christian McCaffrey and the uh, pours water all over sure. it, you know. And then you got then 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 Dynasty Twitter takes a couple of days and reassures everybody: don't let this hurt your feelings, don't let this hurt your feelings. So what we really want to dive into here, Casey, is let's look at is Christian McCaffrey. This is he's ADP on DLF. Dynasty startup ADP, he's picked number 18 by average in these drafts. This is, again, post-draft pre-CJ Anderson. So I'm sure that's going to stagger a little bit backwards when this, the next month's ADP comes out with CJ Anderson factoring in. But a lot well, of people... Things, things were really starting to ramp up because there was a bunch of big guys out there saying that, if well, if he just gets X amount more touches a game... He'll be right up there with like a Le'Veon Bell. Oh and yeah, all those, these other, so it, it was, was going around. It was it was getting hot and heavy there for it a minute. It was getting hot and heavy. That's right. That's right. And and there's and then there's people that are staying, just saying, hey, keep it hot and heavy because CJ doesn't hurt you, and he's going to elevate his game based off of his rookie season doing so well. So there's a couple of things we're going to get into about. Obviously, we're going to look back on his rookie season, look at how well he did, break down some of those numbers and some of those point totals from his, you know putting what he did from the running back as a fantasy football starter for your team. And then we got to look at what the Panthers did do, bringing in um, the DJ Moore first round wide receiver, Mm -hmm. bringing in CJ Anderson to, you know, to, to be in the backfield with him and bringing back um, Greg Olson, which, which, which is a huge pickup for the Panthers and, and slight stock down to everybody that it catches passes over there now, because there was talks that he might be in the Monday night football booth, Sure, but that job obviously goes to somebody else, and now Greg Olson signs a two-year contract. And like you said, sure, he could go. There's plenty of other places other than Monday Night Football for him to go to next year. Doesn't necessarily he's playing for mean he's playing for two years, but it sure sounds like it today. Right. Well, reg- regardless of, of which way it's going, he was still a guy who in 2016 had 127 targets. Exactly. And last year, I, I don't know what the number was, but it was like 30. Well, he got hurt after week two and didn't get back till week 12, and then he was maybe not even right because in week 13 he got zero targets. But then when they needed to play that – when they played that game against the Packers, when Aaron Rodgers came back for one week and the Packers were trying to make the playoffs in the mm-hmm. NFC and the Panthers were like, no, no, you don't, I think I – think, um, he, I think he crushed it. I think he had ten catches for nine yeah. catches for ninety yards he had, or something. He had thirty-eight on the season, which right, and, and a third of them were in one game. Off yeah. of what he was last exactly. season. Yeah, so they they when when the Panthers needed it, they leaned on him for a game. Greg Olson stepped up, helped him stay in the playoffs, pushed out the Packers for the NFC spot there. And as they were still trying to make the playoffs and, and then re- and kind of retired him the rest of his regular season. You have the, the other rookie from last year, Curtis Samuel, also coming back, uh, who right when he got injured, he had seven targets in the game that he got injured in. And I don't even think it was halftime or it was just after half. So he was just starting to kind of get rolling. He, he missed the beginning of the season with an injury. He finally came in, it was in a four game stretch there and was starting to look decent. He had a nasty ankle injury on on I think it was a Monday or a Sunday night game. Well, it's, it's funny uh, that you not nothing funny about the injury, but it's funny that you just said a four game stretch because a lot the NFL teams will talk about the NFL year as like quarters, first four games, second four games. You know, there's quarters of a season, and in each season, each season itself is just such a a big up and down. Uh, there's so much a with war the, of attrition, right, right, with the injuries and everything else. So like you got. You know, Greg Olson's hurt. Curtis Samuel was drafted right behind uh, in the, in the same draft that they took McCaffrey, and people were like, "What are you doing?" The same type of players, but they're trying to revamp their de- their offense around. Like, hey, how can we get Cam Newton to get the ball out of his hands quick and not take shots? And so the Panthers are kind of really almost scrambling all year last year, trying to figure out their new offense. So going into this year, I'd see what you're saying about Curtis Samuel looking like he was heating up for a couple of games. But you come into a season where now you got people that are healthy, hopefully, and of course Kelvin Benjamin gets traded away midway right. through the season. Week, so you got to yeah. So you re you re jostle the depth chart completely. You bring in the field stretcher Torrey Smith, like you said, Curtis Samuel is coming back around. They bring in a first rounder and DJ Moore. 
Demir well, Bird, you, my Gamecock boy, played good a couple games down the stretch. You fired your offensive coordinator from last year, so you're starting from scratch really anyway with whoever is coming back and playing for this team. Norv Turner is going to be your guy. Right. So your whole exactly. philosophy and system is going to change. So you know, Yeah, yeah. So Norv Turner comes in, and he's known for throwing the running backs and having all this stuff going on. But I, So we've, we're, we're setting up here, bringing into 2018 – Panthers are bringing back some receivers, bringing in some new guys, getting some guys healthy. And what happens with Christian McCaffrey? You bring in C.J. Anderson. The love for Christian McCaffrey, the value for Christian McCaffrey in Dynasty right now is through the roof. And where do we go from here with Christian McCaffrey? So let's let's go forward and try to break that down. Yeah, well, I mean, just to start off with, I mean, I, I, I think he's overvalued currently. And, and that's not going to be a popular opinion. Let's just put that out here now. No, but I mean, it's it's just a, like you said. He was he was being drafted at RB or player sixteen, player sixteen, player sixteen overall. So I mean, he's he's just not a guy that I want to rely on for my RB one purposes. Even it, though when it, you exactly. look at the last year, he ended up at RB ten when you look at overall point standings and these and these are cool numbers so let's before we go we set up for this year coming in but let's look back at what christian mccaffrey's rookie year was like to establish this love fest for christian mccaffrey and i get it the dude's what 22 23 years old if that and he is just crushes it as a rookie gets drafted top 10 the panthers get some hate for it but he comes out and that's the thing you just mentioned and his consistently let's let's talk about the fact that he just probably the least likely running back in the league to get suspended, you know he's he's about as he's about as clean cut as it gets. He comes in, he gets two hundred and twenty eight total PPR points last year. It's good enough for RB ten. Doesn't miss any time due to health. Doesn't miss any time due to suspension, and comes in and because he's healthy and because he catches eighty balls, that's good enough to get you RB ten in a total points format, not points per game. So if you click that stat and you turn it into points per game, he backs up a little bit because uh, you know Dalvin Cook jumps up there, those types of players. That he's still ahead of David Johnson because David Johnson, I think, got hurt in like the second quarter of his game week one, which was super sad to see. Um, but let me just point out something here. He had 11 more points than Duke Johnson on the season. Right. Well, this is this is where. So let, this, this is kind of that's kind of where it comes to me of being like, well, Duke Johnson's riding pine. Obviously, Carlos Hyde and Chubb and all that situation comes in here, but and nobody will give you anything for Duke Johnson. But he's really not that different than Christian McCaffrey. Nobody's got love for Duke Johnson. Everybody loves Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey scored eleven more. An points. opportunity is king. I understand all that, so I don't. I, I, I understand that. No I'm doubt. Not saying that Duke Johnson and Christian McCaffrey. Let's not say this without saying. Yeah, Jarvis Landry comes to the Browns. They 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 bring in Nick Chubb, and that was you know, and all this ADP and Carlos, and, and there's just there's yeah, a lot bringing, going on. We know that, but and yes, it does kind of it does keep circle back for, around for a player to opportunity. be that close with having kind of similar opportunities last year in Duke Johnson to being, you know, just nobody wants anything to do with Duke Johnson and Christian McCaffrey's, you know, everyone's love child right now, which is, yeah. which is fine. But I just, I can't justify going in at, at pick 16. Like to me, he's, he's a guy that I, I feel great as my RB two. I don't want him to be my, I can't, I can't afford for him to be my lead dog RB one, because I don't think you're going to end up winning championships that way. Like, there's a ton for him to develop into, and I love everything about Christian McCaffrey for all the reasons you just stated. But I mean, I I love the fact that he's the my two, not my one. Like I feel exactly. very safe with him with the catches and all that stuff as well, my two. There's nothing to not like about Christian McCaffrey. There's there, like like we were joking. His Madden rating, his Madden ratings are pro, are off the charts. He's fast. He's quick. He can catch. He he just he does it all right. But. He could run routes, all that good stuff. His his Madden ratings are ridiculous. But like you just said, his last year in May 27, ADP was pick 30. So you're in the middle of the third round. So you've already got two guys. You could have a running back. You could have two running backs if you were like us in the mock it up before we fuck it up last year or in the uh, rookie in the uh, pre in the startup mock that we did. I took D, uh, David Johnson at first at one at the first pick, and then on the two three turn coming back. I took Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon. And so you could have him, you know, you could flip flop those guys, whoever you wanted to be your two and three running back. But this year going in, there's there you if if 
if his ADP is 18 right now, and of course that's pre CJ, and some people yeah it might slide back a couple picks, but it, like you said, the love is is thick up for Christian McCaffrey right now. So if his ADP is 18, you you only got a one out of two chance of him having to be your second running back. You either took a receiver first or you took a running back first. So either way, he's either your lead dog running back and you got a stud wide receiver, or either you put him in as your second running back and you got a running back and, and and you have no wide receivers yet, which that was the definitely would be the way I would play it. Right. But I think what we're trying to say here is just throw up a caution flag to everybody and look and say, there's nothing wrong if he's your RB two and he's averaging 14 points a week. But those RB numbers last year are a little bit skewed, and obviously injuries are going to happen to everybody. But, like, just for instance, in those numbers that he put up last year. Number between, one, no injuries happened to him. No injuries right? happened, yeah. He got dinged here and there, but he yeah. played every game. No injuries, so a which big, is good and right, right. good for him. Great for him. Not just Nothing bad about it. It's just you just didn't see what the downside is to his him having an injury. But, like, let's just, for instance, weeks two through week eight, he got eight or less carries per game. In 16 or less rushing yards per game, everything was carried by the wide receipt for by the catches. And two of those weeks, he had you know one of those weeks he went nine for a hundred, and another week he went ten for 56 and a touch. In the other games, it was like man, I, you don't 10, 11 fantasy points, and it's not a killer, but it's right. not helping you win. Right. Well, I mean, you bring you bring C.J. Anderson in, and I I don't even think you're going to see that much of a of a of a bump down for him. Because I, I don't I don't I don't think people respect C.J. Anderson. He's always the disrespected cat of all the running back circles. And I think you're going to see a much better year than you saw out of C.J. Anderson than you did out of Jay Stu last year. No, no doubt about so it. So I think there should be a bump, but a, a decent decline down. Also to go with the fact that they did just bring in D.J. Moore, like you mentioned. Greg Olson comes back. You have uh, Curtis Samuel out there. You have Devin Funchess out there. There's a bunch more guys out there. Just like there's a target void over here. Christian McCaffrey just got pummeled with targets along with Devin Funches because Kelvin Benjamin was that got shipped out halfway through the season and Greg Olson wasn't around and Curtis Samuel got hurt and their their start they had to the reason your boy Demir Bird got some run is because they didn't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Yeah. And, and so what I guess what I'm saying is is like McCaffrey and Funches both had 113 targets last year. Like. I think McCaffrey will be fine, and the reason I feel great about him is because I feel very safe with the decent PPR floor, but I would feel much better if there was a a, a 12 to 15 carry kind yes. of floor there as well and 40 or 50 rushing yards to go along with that to start me off before I'm even getting to the rushing attempts. And I think that these new guys, DJ Moore is a first-round pick. Like you said, Curtis Samuel was, I, in my opinion, looking decent coming on there. They yeah. bring in Torrey Smith. You get Greg Olson Who's not back. a target hog. And if anything, for this no. discussion, he's actually a plus for Christian McCaffrey to stretch the defense. But it's but just one more mouth and, a, and another, another couple option. of targets. Yeah. You know, he'll have, by the end of the season, they'll, there's still targets not going at Christian McCaffrey. There's be maybe, maybe he'll have 50 targets or something like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. A, 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 an NFL pro wide receiver that is a, give him some one more healthy good body. And I, I'm not hating on Christian McCaffrey, the player. Nope. I love Christian McCaffrey, the player. That's just kind of what you were alluding to of saying. I like, love him. His skill set is awesome. Everybody loves him. That's the thing. But but they and they love and see they love the they're loving the heck out of him right now. And that's kind of what there's so much here and there's so much around Christian McCaffrey. I'm sure that the last ten minutes of conversation has been confusing to the listener of saying, what the heck are y'all trying to tell us? We're trying to tell you Christian McCaffrey is really good at football. We're trying to tell you Christian McCaffrey is a really safe RB2, but to draft him in the second round of your dynasty startup is just... It's, it might be a little it's aggressive. It's a little aggressive. It's a little aggressive for your points that you could be scoring every week. Out of, For instance, he's going ahead of Melvin Gordon and Devontae Freeman. You know, Devontae Freeman was banged up last year and averaged the same amount of points as Christian McCaffrey. Right. Melvin Gordon averaged four more points a game than Christian McCaffrey and just gets no love. Just being disrespected. Just getting disrespected. For no reason. For no reason. Tons of opportunity over there. Plus, he gets shoveled the ball in his gut. That's the that's my point. Is the, and see the thing about it is is every once in a while you get those games where Melvin like Melvin Gordon had a three point game and a five point game last year and it just looked atrocious. But between those two games, he gave you 34 and 36. The poor guy's never had a healthy offensive line his entire never, career. Never, never. And it's look, if they could just stay healthy coming through, you're going to see Melvin Gordon do work again. Let me tell you how good Melvin Gordon was last year. He scored 
nine points less than Kareem Hunt. Right. That's how good Melvin Gordon last was last year. But you want year. Christian McCaffrey over him. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's, Christian McCaffrey makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, and it's Christian. Oh, he had 113 targets last year. Right. But you, you and that's 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 my point. The targets and the catches are awesome, but Christian McCaffrey, it, before C.J. Anderson got there, the Panthers were saying that Cameron Artis Payne was going to get his shot. Right. They were. It was going to be Demarco Murray. It was going to be. C.J. Anderson, it was going to be somebody else, a veteran, to come back in there after J. Stu left to come out there and pound the rock. You were not going to get right. Christian McCaffrey that's, pounding the rock. That's kind of it why wasn't, it was never going to happen. What well, leads me to say that I don't believe there'll be too much of a of a blowback because I, I can't understand that you didn't know think that, that anyway. somebody else was yeah. coming in here and getting carries because they clearly don't want Christian McCaffrey to have these carries. You don't want that, and if you own Christian McCaffrey, you don't really want that. No, two hundred plus carry wear need. and tear on Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, it would be maybe great for your team, but maybe he's a little more dinged up. You want to see him playing in space, getting a handoff, you know, here or there. Yeah, and see with Christian McCaffrey going a couple picks in front of Melvin Gordon, that's just it's it's a little bit crazy. But Christian McCaffrey's going twelve picks on average in front of Devontae Freeman, which is absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, Freeman's a couple of years older, but Freeman catches rock. And he gets the ball in his hands, and he gets goal line carries. And when you're a Panther, your number one read on the goal line is going to be Cam, Cam Newton. Newton. We've been telling followed, you that for followed years. Followed by whoever the other running followed back by is. is going to be C.J. Anderson. And K- and K- Christian McCaffrey was the total points RB ten last year on two rushing touchdowns. So like the people that are trying to say let's take these rookie year numbers and add a little bit to them and see what happens. I know it sounds great, but that's what we're here to say. The rookie totals are almost a ceiling. They re, like there's not there's you're not going to go is Christian McCaffrey's not going to score six or eight rushing touchdowns this year. He's not going to catch so. he's not going to catch many more balls than 80 if he I does. Don't, I don't know how he can have more than 113 targets this year. Is is basically what this is all boiling down to. When you bring all these guys back, you invest a first round pick into a guy who by the way could also be Christian McCaffrey, you can right. plug him into the same and you also have by another guy in Curtis Samuel who you have a bunch of who could do Probably similar things to Christian McCaffrey. You have three guys now who are kind of versatile pieces, and, and I would love to see this offense be super creative. I don't know if 60, however old Norv Turner is, right. that maybe is, even older, if, if he's, he's going to do that or not. There's no way that Norv Turner is going to be forward-thinking enough in his old age. Take nothing away from Nor- Norv Turner's resume. He's been out there, and he's been crushing it for years and years, but he's just – how many times – he's just – He's a little bit antiquated, okay? He's going to come in here. He's probably going to take some older system. There's no way he's going to take advantage of Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuels, flexibility, their skill sets, and have them running in all different directions and have the defense chasing them. There's no way he does right. that. You have a guaranteed mismatch with one of those guys. And Every play. all around. Every play. That, but, like, those are guys, like, that you scheme the ball to. And, obviously, DJ Moore. You can come Moore, out with those guys as your three wide receiver set and put C.J. Anderson in the backfield. <laughs> I know. It could get wild and crazy over there for the Panthers. And and so, let, all right, so let's sum this Christian McCaffrey stuff up with if you own him, let's take advantage. Let's let's tell our re, our listeners how to take advantage of this love fest. If you don't own him, let's. we've already cautioned in a startup to not get crazy with the love. I get it. We we owned him in the FFPC league. We moved him recently, and it – we, it really took us a while to swallow not owning him. It took us a little bit to just release the love fest ourselves. And the reason that this conversation is even happening on the airways is because we had to have this exact same breakdown in real life fantasy football, our dynasty league, high stakes league, put our money where our mouth is. We got Christian McCaffrey. We love him. But we realized that the world loves him more. And at the end of the day, if we can take more points and stick them in our running back slot, then Christian McCaffrey is going to give us. We got to take advantage of that love fest, and we upsold. We added some stuff with Christian McCaffrey. We put together a package, and we got together, brought brought back together a bigger and better toy and right. a nice sparkly asset. And we had to. Right. So we we basically went out and traded for Ezekiel Elliott. Like, had to do it. We we went out and we gave it we gave away some first round picks and Christian McCaffrey. And, and when you see. first start talking about it, somebody's probably like, I can't believe you traded first round picks and Christian McCaffrey and you got this question mark with Zeke. Well, yeah, it's a question mark, but it's also an FFPC league. It's also for 
a decent amount of money, not a crazy amount, but it, it's for a reasonable amount of money. Two hundred fifty bucks. We're trying to win money right now. It's short benches. We're trying to, and then when you look at it and you put these two game logs next to each other, not even, and close. you put Ezekiel Elliott and, and Christian McCaffrey next to each other, like yeah, your your PPR floor is great with Christian McCaffrey, but my rock in the gut with. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott is safer, and he averaged like three targets a game, three catches a game. Exactly, exactly. So you can't even compare the two. It's it's twenties all day long for for Ezekiel Elliott, and it's your 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 best games for McCaffrey are twenties. That's that's the exact. That is the point of this conversation. McCaffrey's ceiling is week fifteen. He gets twenty five points. Okay, and that was his his best game of the year. He had and it, it was a fantasy football producer for us gives us 25 fantasy points that was on 12 carries for 60 yards six catches 73 yards and a touchdown in week nine he gives you 20 points on 15 carries 66 and a touch and five catches so he had christian mccaffrey had oh, i'm just gonna rattle these off as fast as i can but just as it was 11 point 11 and a half 8 20 8 14 22 11 10 20 20 which 2020 is great and that's that five game, six game stretch, 14, 22, 11, 10, 20, 20. Those are really, really solid numbers. We're not here to beat down Christian McCaffrey. Those are solid numbers. But that up and down flow of not when you don't get the rock in your gut and you don't get touchdowns, you're not going to catch touchdowns every week. We saw that. There was only one time all season long where he had two cut, a, a, cut, a catch, a reception touchdown two weeks in a row. So let me finish up what I'm saying here. Week 12, he goes 11, 13, he gets, he gets 11, 15.9, 8, 25, 7, and 10 for the week 17. So if your playoffs are week 14, 15, and 16, week 15, if that's your semifinals, if you want to call it, he crushed it for you. But week 14, he gets you 8. And week 16, if that's your championship game, which it is in every league I play in, he gets you 7, you know, because he got 8 carries, 12 carries, and 9 carries. And I mean – it, shit happens. It and, does happen, you know, but, but that that's right. the Christian McCaffrey life. That's what I'm saying. Right. Shit does happen, but the thing is, the 15-point games is when he catches a touchdown or when he catches eight or ten balls. The eight-point right. game is when he only catches three balls for 20 yards and there's no touchdown. And the biggest problem is, is you may have just seen the most amount of just zoning in and, and targets going his way maybe for – I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen again this year. I don't know if you're going to see that kind of volume. And, and, and you you still had a lot of fluctuation. I think it's gonna, there's going to be a little bit more scarcity with, yeah. with some targets here or there. Yeah, and maybe and, the efficiency goes up some. But And at the end of the day, you still got Cam Newton who runs it more. Is, he'd love to right. run it more than he passed it. So the reason I wanted to read those numbers is because there's there is a, there is a the, he's RB10 total points for a reason. He scored points. It's just the down weeks kill you when you're trying to win money. The down weeks kill you when you're trying to win a championship. Not just money, but bragging rights. The down weeks kill you. So you're like, all right, well, you guys added, you said, what did you, per- we, we added, we took Zeke and we put two first round picks with him and went and got Christian McCaffrey. So there, what is the difference there? I told you week between weeks two and eight, Christian McCaffrey got eight or less carries per game. This is what Zeke does with a six game suspension. He gets 24 carries. Week two at the Broncos, the wheels fell off for the for the for the uh, Cowboys, yeah. and they just looked awful. He got nine carries, and they didn't know what to do. But you could see after that, they were like, "Well, we our offense is terrible. We're going to hand it to Zeke. He gets 22, 21, 29, 26, 33, 27, suspended six games, comes back, gets twenty four and twenty seven carries. My man missed six games and got two hundred and forty totes. Yeah, they handed him the ball two hundred and forty times." On a six-game suspension, that is ridiculous. He also added 26 catches, which would get you close to 40 if he played the whole right. season. So, as I mentioned earlier, he was averaging around like three catches a game ish. Exactly. So, like that's the and that in the last and this two offense games, certainly did, that offense certainly didn't come out and just get better this year. With, no, there's not all sorts of Good. they didn't they didn't do what the Carolina Panthers just did and just bring in a bunch of potential playmakers and and you get your stud tight end back your your veteran tight end just left your best offensive weapon just left Terrence Williams is an idiot yeah Bryce Butler's gone yeah like you're you brought in a couple of rookies who I like Gallup as much as the next guy and Cedric Wilson I, I don't hate him at all but I mean you, you you ship Switzer out so you got Beasley out there 
Terrence Williams, Gallup, like what are you doing? You brought in Tavon Austin, which <laughs> what you know. So what you're saying is, I think Zeke Elliott's going to touch the ball 700 times this year. Uh, I mean, there's a good chance. And so, and and the point of the conversation comes. I want to keep wrapping it back and say that we ought to, there's a method to the madness here. The caution flag on the dynasty startup on the Christian McCaffrey love. And how do you handle this love fest that the world's given him, the dynasty community has given him, if you have him? The reason I wanted to point this out, and it doesn't have to be Zeke, if you don't, if you don't, if, if the suspension question mark sure, kills you, sure. if the suspension question mark for Zeke gets you, we went after the most expensive guy other than Gurley. Okay. And so. What we you can go after DJ, you can go after Dalvin Cook, which you wouldn't call you wouldn't cost as much. But like on a team that basically had the offensive wheels fall off last year for the Cowboys, he, Zeke gives you a twenty nine point game and a forty one point game. There's no twenty nine. Christian McCaffrey's best game got to be twenty five, and everything else was a bit lower. Zeke gives you a forty one point game. In his last two, at coming off of the six-game suspension, he goes 15 and 17 fantasy points with no rushing touchdowns against the Seahawks, who are a tough defense no matter what you're doing after this year, we'll see, because they just, coming into this year, they just unloaded the Legion of Doom, boom, so we'll see what happens. But week 17, he gets 17 fantasy points, which doesn't matter because it's week 17, but that's at the Eagles. He gets 27 carries for 100 yards at the Eagles, a division rivalry slobber knocker, but... I'm sure if you look it up, nope. I don't bet. I don't think the Eagles allowed 100 yards to anybody else last year. Right. So, the re, what we did was we took took Christian McCaffrey, added some pieces, and went and just got a, a blue chip. And that's that's the name of the game. It was FFPC. It's a short bench league. So the the more blue chips you can get, that's how you win the game. And I know we've been talking for 30 minutes now on Christian McCaffrey. We this that, but that's what we're trying to bring you is. How to navigate your way around spikes in value, where this Christian McCaffrey comes in as a rookie with a thirty AD twenty six ADP, which was aggressive right. for a rookie running back. He got drafted in the first round, but you knew he wasn't going to be a ball, you know, ball hawk when it comes to just you know carrying the load. He's not going to be a uh, three hundred carry back. So how is he going to go in the second, you know, mid second round coming into this year? Dynasty startup ADP right now. It's just too aggressive for us. Wanted to break all that down. It's, 